This is the Mobile Tech Podcast, brought to you by worldpodcasts.com. Now here's your host, Tank Girl, Miriam Joie. Brought to you by Audible. Stay tuned for a special offer at the end of the show. Hi, and welcome to the Mobile Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Jouar, and today is Thursday, December 23rd, 2021, and my guest is the excellent Kevin Nether, the tech ninja himself. Hi, Kevin. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm great. It's almost Christmas for those who celebrate it. Can't believe it. Where did the year go? You know, I was actually just looking up, I think last week, and I said, oh, crap, like, Christmas is a week a week away, and it's just you know it's it's always like last minute shopping. And every year I tell myself I'm not doing last minute shopping, but right after this podcast, I'm literally getting up, getting my car, and I'm going last minute shopping. So I I, ah. I am the worst when it comes to this. <laughs> Good luck, my friend. <laughs> That's going to be crazy. Um, so actually, let's start with this. You know, I've done a few shows in the last few weeks that recap like the best phones of 2021 and the best tech of 2021. We're a little light on news items. Um, we can certainly go crazy. There's a, some OnePlus stuff I want to talk about. And and the reason I bring OnePlus up for me is that you'll see in a second. But I want to I wanna ask you, what is the thing that in tech in 2021 that most surprised you? The thing that you just didn't expect kind of came out of left field. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. It can also be a good thing, whatever it yeah. might be. Yeah, you know, for for me, it was actually the new MacBooks. And, and the reason I'm saying that is because, like, I was 100% content with my current MacBook. So my wife has a MacBook Air, and I started using that. I was like, you know what? This M1 chip is really nice. I love the battery life and just, like, the instant on. And, like, I love that. And I had a 16-inch Intel MacBook, and that thing was a tank. It was a beast, but it was so loud. And it was, like, kind of annoying to use after a while. And so when the new MacBooks were announced, like I literally bought it just because it had the MagSafe and it also had the SD card reader. And I'm like, yeah. yes, like they're going back to ports. Like this is what I need because it's been times where I traveled with my MacBook and I forgot my dongle and I literally couldn't get my work done because of that. And that was like the biggest thing that was like really, really hard for me. And it's just, this is a pro machine and I can't get pro work done without extra accessories, which is typical Apple at times. So, <laughs> you know, it's a game changer. I don't have one because I have a MacBook Air M1. And for my video editing need, that does a job. I, I still, most of my videos are still 1080p. So I don't even do 4K at this point. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm switching soon. And I think this can handle it until I have some more heavy duty editing. Like if I was a full-time YouTube creator where all I did was YouTube, I'd be on a 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro M1 for sure right now. Uh, it's it's incredible. And, you know, you did a great review because you just mentioned that as your surprise tech of the year. I'm going to actually add it to our show notes later because I saw you oh, did awesome. it, but it's it's getting a little old. So I was like, ah, I don't know yeah. if Kevin wants to talk about that. <laughs> but anyway, you did. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, for me, well, it's kind of hard. I think there's a few things. They were kind of like expected in the same way I think the MacBook was expected. We knew that if Apple was going to make a MacBook Pro based on some sort of M1 successor, it was going to kick butt based on just the M1 stuff we already had, right? Mm -hmm. So in a way, I feel like you, I'm like, okay, the two things I'm going to mention are kind of like, kind of obvious, the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Like yeah. after the 2020 kind of meh pixels, I mean... The cheaper, the A's are always great. But the 5 was, yeah, you know, not really worth its price. Good phone, but not, I don't think it was worth it. This is the reverse. I mean, you cannot recommend a better phone than the base Pixel 6 for $599 right now. I keep forgetting it's even $599, Kevin. Sometimes yeah. I, in my, I tell people it's $699 because I can't even imagine it's $599. <laughs> yeah. And you know, for, for the last, I'll say three or four years, I have recommended a Pixel, whether it's the A series or, or not, for people who are like, hey, I just want a phone that has a good camera and decent battery life. And I'm like, a Pixel, this is probably the best choice for you. And I've been recommending it for a lot of people. I mean, most of my family are on Pixels at this point, which is uh, which is really nice to see because we have a lot of great holiday photos and pictures of my kid when they're watching them. They always come out nice. And you know, it's kind of, a, kind of a nice thing that you have a really nice uh, camera in your pocket and it doesn't require any type of you know skill set to use. Like I can't hand someone my Sony camera and expect them to take as good as pictures as they do with their Pixel, which is definitely nice to see. Yeah, 100%. You know, I, again, this was expected in a way. We knew that Google was going to do something great. 
all mm-hmm. the rumors led up to it. But once they finally delivered it, it was kind of like the MacBook Pro, you know, it's like, oh, relief, you know? Yes. I was just like surprised, but also kind of not surprised, you know? But speaking of other surprises, the Z Flip 3, like I did not think that Samsung was going to drop the price on that. I figured yeah. they would improve it, but I didn't expect water resistance. I didn't expect the price to get below a thousand. Well, it's a dollar less, but you know, <laughs> I just bought one for 180 bucks. Wow. Because there's so many discounts. The trade-ins, yeah. You know, I bought, yeah, I bought, I traded in some older phones that I'd lying around that weren't review units and I got 700 and something dollars off. And can't be, yeah, wow. it was insane. <laughs> I couldn't resist. Like I, you know, Theo, my spouse is going to use it mostly. They're finally interested in Android because of the folding flippy stuff. So <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'll get you one. I got an unlocked one because, you know, we're on Timo and I just, I'm very allergic to uh, carrier phones with all the bloatware and stuff. I agree. I agree. But it surprised me. I was like, wow. You know, I don't know if you feel that way. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely do feel that way. I mean, when I, when I initially used the fold and the flip, and I, I was using them at, at a Samsung hands-on event. Um, the Samsung rep came by and asked me, like, which one do you like? And I was like, you know what? The Fold definitely is cooler, but the Flip is much more practical. And it's, it's just really nice because I'm actually trying to disconnect myself from phones because I find myself on the phone too much and always just checking for stuff, scrolling on Twitter. I get out of Twitter and go back into it and scroll again for whatever reason. So I feel like the Flip for me is like, subliminally when i flip the phone down i'm done with the phone and then if something else notifies me i can then open it up and interact with it or i can check the screen and see if it's important and then sort of use it so so for me it's just one of those phones that encourages me to not be on the phone so much but when i do i have that large screen to to utilize it with i think a lot of people are underestimating the power of that cover display because it's like you know if you wear a smartwatch like i do you get your notification on the watch you can triage that way right you can go like not important. I'll deal with this later, especially right now. I'm getting like 20 CS emails oh. an hour or something. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah. the point is that uh, if you don't have a smartwatch, and, and I don't blame you, lots of people don't want to, then you could cover display. You can look and go, nope, you know, mm-hmm. or, oh my God, this is that job interview thing I was waiting for. Like, you know, whatever. Exactly. Right. So I think that's, that kind of makes it more intentional, as you said, to open the phone. Mm-hmm. How do you feel about the Oppo Find N? Do you have one? I do not have one actually. And everything that I'm seeing about it, it looks, it looks awesome. Like I, I, I think, I think 2022 is going to be the year that, that foldable phones mature a bit more where it's not just Samsung doing it. Like, I think more, more companies are going to have their version of it. And I think a lot of companies like to see what Samsung would do or what a Huawei would do to sort of figure out the best way to do it. Like look at their mistakes and sort of eliminate those mistakes and then you know build on top of that so i haven't seen it yet but everything i'm seeing it looks really nice i would love to get my hands on one um, i need to hook you up kevin let's talk sure. after i have some contacts okay. there's mine um and i'm gonna open it up obviously with the uh, the screen blurring i'm not sure how well that's gonna work <laughs> but yeah, here we go it's uh freaking amazing wow okay and uh i just really like it yeah, it's really small. It's kind of like halfway between a Flip and a Z Fold 3. That's awesome. Still a heavy and thick phone, but the fact that you have a full-on display in the front is maybe not as intentional as having the cover display, but it's. Yeah. Um, I, I've just started using it, and it's it's very much a China phone. So yeah. what I mean by that is it's for that market. So you, you do get Google Play services and everything, but you have to, by default, it doesn't like let you log into Google by default. So you know, restoring from backup doesn't happen. Okay. You pretty yeah. much have to like set up the phone and either do a, uh, they have like a, a copy app that's built in. You can copy from an old phone. So if you have an old phone set up like Android or whatever, you can copy over all your apps or you have to manually, at least on mine, the, I had to manually install the Play Store from like APK Mirror or whatever. Yeah. And then, yeah. then everything works. Every, after that, everything is good and gold and you can install your apps. But for me, I wanted to restore because I have so many apps I want. So a bit of a kind of dancing around to get it to the way I want it. But everything's working. Uh, Google Pay is even working. And I have, uh, the only thing I can't get, I need to change the launcher to Nova or something because yeah. I can't get the, uh, the Discover feed is, is not included in the launcher. Okay. Although other Oppo phones like the Find X3 Pro have the Discover feed. So, mm. you know, they're global phones. I think 
a little more like the setup is more like what you're used to with like you you play with the vivo we're going to talk about that in a bit oh yeah but yeah. but you know it did walk you through the usual restore from google cloud whatever stuff that on chinese phone china market phones doesn't work like that you kind of have to you jump the hoops but of course uh some phones don't have gms yeah. as, like the huawei for example and some rare phones every now and then does from other brands don't but usually for the non-huawei phones you can just go to apk mayor and just download the stuff you need and you're good to go and speaking of cs by the way it looks like a lot of people are bailing <laughs> so at this point i'm not even sure if i'm gonna go i mean i'm planning to go i have yeah. Everything set up, but everything's refundable. So, are you going? Yeah. So, so that's interesting. Like, I, I'm in, I'm in several group chats, and we're sort of talking about it. So, I mean, so I, I was, I was working with a sponsor, and the sponsor pulled out. So, I mean, that was kind of a big one because oh, I was no. actually, yeah, it's yeah. So I was like working with them, and I had you know a, kind of a nice setup with them, which which is totally which is totally fine. So at, at this point, it's just like what am I at this point is like, what am I going for? Because that was right. sort of, that was sort of a big, big reason I was going, like I was going for this specific reason. And a lot of the brands that I would like to see are not there anymore. And so I'm just kind of confused. So I may go instead of the five days, I may go two days and kind of get a, a layout of the, of the land and, and still, still make connections. But I'm, I, I'm still not 100% sure on that. I'm still talking to my friends and kind of getting a barometer of it. But the thing that I'm worried about and Maybe I'm looking into it too much. I don't want to be vilified for going because it looks like a lot of people who aren't going yeah. and, and brands that aren't going are like posting about it. Everyone's like, oh, you're doing the right thing. You're a hero and all these things. And I don't want to be seen as like a super spreader if I go, even though I'm going to take all the precautionary measures. Yeah. I'm actually getting boosted today, fully vaccinated. My family's vaccinated. I, I, I would do all the precautionary measures because I don't want to catch it. I don't want to give it to my kid. Who can't get vaccinated because he's so young like i exactly yeah i would do this more than anyone would do it but I, i'm just worried that there is going to be backlash by going you know it's just one it's just one of those things that I, I sort of worry about a little bit i don't i don't let people dictate how i live my life but at the same time i don't want to be seen as someone who's you know pushing forward the spreading of of this pandemic so it's, just, it's i'm wrestling with it I'm the same way. I mean, I hear you and my sponsor hasn't pulled out, which is why I'm still going right now because it's the same as you. I wasn't like going to do this on my own dime. There's no point. So yeah, they're still going. So at this point, I'm still going, but that might okay. change and I might even decide to not go in the end, but I don't know. We'll see. I feel like, you know, I'm also vaccinated. I got my booster shot between, uh, between the MediaTek thing and the Qualcomm thing, actually. Nice. So okay. um, it kicked my butt. Uh, but I'm Thanks. glad I got it because, you know, my whole family is all vaccinated and boosted too. So I think taking the right precautions, I'll be honest, I'm planning to avoid crowds. So the way I'm planning to do it myself is there's a few things I want to do hands on and I'm going to do those things. But like press conferences, sitting mm -hmm. down and watching somebody tell me about their great new, no, I'm yeah. just going to avoid those. I'm going to avoid, it's going to be a tough decision, but. Do I want to do unveiled Pepcom and Showstoppers? That is still up in the air. Yeah. I'm registered for them, but the thing I want to do is the hands-on stuff. So if I can get mm -hmm. hands-on a few phones that I want to get hands-on with, if I can get hands-on on the car stuff I want to get hands-on with, then I feel like I'm not quite as you know yeah. exposed. And if I do all my work in the hotel room, I think I should be okay. So we'll see. But yeah. you're right. This is a big decision. And you know, I feel you about getting your sponsorship pulled that happened to me for mobile congress uh right in 2020 just just before uh well just after covid hit and we all locked down they you know they just canceled everything and i was all ready to go you know it was gonna yeah. be oh man i've been going to barcelona for so long that it was a <laughs> bit of a bummer yeah and it, it, i was gonna say in in, in half the, half going to these events is just seeing seeing your friends seeing people that you work with because you know to be honest me doing this job it's very lonely. Like people don't understand that. There's not many people who understand what you go through, the late nights, the, the you know, especially for video, editing up really late at night and, and trying to get these things out. And not many people can relate to how you're feeling. And, and for me, I'm a community person. I love to talk to people. So, you know, my wife tries to understand, my friends try to understand, but when I'm face to face with my friends and talking to them about my struggles I was going through, like for me, that's everything. 
yeah, we're a family. I mean, we've all known each other for years. We all go through the same struggles. Like, you know, people think, oh, you're competing. Of course we do, but mm -hmm. there's room for all of us. And so that's why we help each other out. And we are a very tight knit community. We've gone through the same BS, through the same ups and downs. Uh, we experienced the same, like, you know, this sponsorship getting pulled for you has happened to me. Like we all know. And I think that's what makes us such a family and a community. And, you know, a lot of people say like, other than your close friends, personal friends, like who are the people, you know, you, you care about the most. And I, for me, it's my media colleagues, including my YouTube creator friends and all, because, you know, also they come as guests on my show. I can do my show if they had, didn't have their generous, you know, time. And, yeah. um, I appreciate it. It makes, it makes my content possible. So yeah, you know, I'm glad we're talking about it because it's not something people talk about on their, <laughs> on their content very often. Of course. Um, speaking of, by the way, I showed the Oppo Find N earlier. For those of you listening to the podcast the normal way on audio, there is a video feed of this podcast that you can get through Patreon. It's a tier there. So patreon.com slash tankerl. That's patreon.com slash tnkgrl. If you want to see that video content every week, you can get it actually a little bit ahead of the audio version, which is nice. So you get kind of a special perk. And it's also not very edited. So I try to be as raw as I can, you know, with the audio, I go very careful and I take out all the, the tongue tickings and the, you know, all the weird <laughs> sounds in the background. No, the video just get kind of like, okay, if we did something really stupid, I cut it out or like FedEx arrives right now, I cut it out, <laughs> but that's it. You get the raw from the time I count down all the way to the time I say cheers. So Check that out, folks, because I know not everybody's listening to the end where I do all the, you know, thank you and acknowledgements and link madness. So, and of course, you know, I will be giving you a chance, Kevin, to, uh, to tell everyone where they can find you then. Sure. So listen, there's another thing I want to bring up, you know, another surprise that was a disappointment surprise for me. And you tell me if you have a disappointment surprise for me, it was the one plus nine. Not the 9 Pro, but the 9 specifically. And in general, the way that OnePlus kind of lost the plot. Like, we could start seeing some troubles when the Galaxy S20 Fan Edition came out last year. And it was like, oh, look, Samsung can outdo OnePlus if they really want to, right? And so it was kind of a party trick. I was like, Samsung's just doing it because they can. And then the next thing we know, OnePlus 9 comes out, 9 Pro. The 9 Pro is solid, but I think it's too expensive considering, mm -hmm. especially now that, you know, the rest of the year happened and we got Google and stuff. But more importantly, the nine plastic frame, no OIS on a camera that's Hasselblad branded. I don't know what they were thinking. You look at the OnePlus Nord 2 that they sell in Europe and other parts of the world, and that thing has OIS. Now it has a plastic frame and it doesn't have a Snapdragon 888, but it costs like half the price. So yeah. What's your take on that? Not specifically the nine, but do you have a piece of tech that kind of you bummed about? Actually, it for me it is OnePlus because every year I do look forward to OnePlus coming out. And I remember the you know, taking it back. I remember the original flagship killer OnePlus, right? It had the sandstone back. I mean, I still remember that as one of my favorite phones that I ever used, just because it was. I felt really cool having it because it was like rare. You had to get invited to buy it and, and things like that. So for me, like OnePlus holds a special place. But I would say for the last few years, OnePlus has been disappointing me because their prices have continued to kind of rise, whereas Samsung and Apple are bringing out phones that are more affordable and they, they are bringing very competitive specs. So it's really hard for me to push someone to buy a OnePlus phone at this point, um, especially the Pro version, just because the Pro version... It does a lot of great things, but it's not the best at anything anymore. And, and, and that for me is really hard to, to, to grapple with, you know, for, for OnePlus. So, yeah, I, I would say the OnePlus series for me has sort of been disappointing me the last couple of years. I, I really wish the 10, when it, whenever it does come out, I really hope the 10 kind of takes us back to OnePlus's roots. But I'm really, really concerned about OnePlus. Yeah, I think that's the same for me, especially with that 599 Google you know, Pixel 6, metal frame, OIS on the main camera, like no BS, you know, everything's there. Now, sure, you don't get like, a, you don't get a quad HD display and you don't get a telephoto, whatever. The point is it's $599 and at that yeah. price, it hits every single box. And to me, that's how you make an affordable flagship. That's how you make a premium 
mid-ranger if you want to call it that yeah. it's not really because of the 888 in there but <laughs> like that's that's what we were used to from yeah. OnePlus and I got a Nord 2 to review and you know what it is like that it is that OnePlus goodness we all want mm -hmm. yet they don't bring it here and you know I tell you why they don't bring it here and I tell you why the OnePlus 9 was you know kind of decontented with plastic frame and, and taking out the OIS. It's because the carriers wanted to yeah. sell that phone and they dictate things. And OnePlus, I get it. They have to play that game in the US, but I think they learned their lesson. And hopefully the carriers didn't sell that phone very much and can kind of look back and go, you know, maybe look at what Google's doing. Maybe we can do something kind of like meet, meet halfway, you know? Yeah. I'm hoping, but you know what? The reason I bring it up is, aha, news item number one, we've got <laughs> OnePlus you know, rumors, one plus 10 rumors to be specific. So that's kind of cool. Supposedly it's coming out soon, like January ish is the rumor. So, yeah. And, you know, one plus typically every six months they have a new phone, but it feels like it's been a little longer than six months since their last like main flagship phone. Is, is that, is that correct? It feels like it's been a little longer this year. Well, yeah. So they, came out was it february or march last year a little earlier yeah. last year and then this year the rumors are at least for the 10 pro that we might even see it like maybe ces or something i don't know yeah i hear that we're talking january so that could be you know late january i don't know the point is it looks like maybe oneplus is realizing hey 2021 was a lot about an off year for us you know and you know i've seen what the sister brands can do oppo mm -hmm. real me and Vivo, and I know what they could do with the yes. OnePlus stuff. And so I think it's just a minor tweak away from being brilliant again and then pricing it right. Like, I'm not expecting OnePlus to be the price leader that it used to be. I, I want it to play more in the Google Pixel leagues, like of delivering a solid experience for a good price, but not necessarily being like, you know, a Xiaomi or, you know, whatever competitor. Of, of course not. That's what Realme is for in the BBK group, right? And I agree. Yeah. So, uh, but I want to see something like nine hundred bucks or eight fifty yeah. for a real flagship, no compromises. Everything is right and better Hasselblad stuff than last year because I knew it was the first time last year. I was willing to give them a pass. It takes a yeah. while, but if this year they don't bring us some like really unique things, like Vivo did with the Zai stuff, you know, I think that they're they're not going to be competitive so hopefully fingers crossed as big <laughs> one plus fans yeah uh, that's a big piece of news are you excited then yeah you know it, especially like you said it, if they can hit that 850 price mark then i think we will have a better conversation just because once you start getting near a thousand dollars then you start bringing a lot of other manufacturers into play and then you have to get compared to those guys directly when you when you reach a thousand dollars so i think for 850 if they could bring the 120 hertz screen in that camera, like you said, with the Hasselblad technology, if that if that gets better, because like like I said, it was sort of for me, it was disappointing because the first thing I do with an Android phone, I put Google camera on there and just see how much better the Google camera still is. And I was getting better results using Google's camera instead of their camera. So it's just like, you know, what what is their camera software actually doing? I know it's the the camera tech behind it, but at the same time, their software just wasn't optimized to to really utilize the Hasselblad camera. So I wanna make sure their software really works with the hardware to make that happen. And then as far as software updates, I think OnePlus has started to lag behind a little bit as far as bug fixes and things like that. It seems like they're always very reactive lately instead of proactive when it comes to updates. So I'm not sure what's happening there, but I am going to wipe the slate clean. And, and, and I really hope the, the 10 Pro this year sort of takes me back to to where I want to be with OnePlus, because I really want to love OnePlus. I really want to use their phones. I, I, I love them, so. For sure. You know, it's interesting because the Nord 2 has that first common OS between Oppo and OnePlus, and it really feels just like Oxygen before. Like, I don't feel yeah. that okay. they're losing anything with that. So that's good news. Hopefully, we'll see an even slicker version of that with Android 12 on this phone. We know it's going to be a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Like, that was already pretty much announced. It turns out, I was just reading the article real quick from Engadget I'm going to be linking to, that Pete Lau actually said January. For, so it's not just a rumor at this point. Okay. The question, I think the rumor is CES, so I, I'm not sure if that's true or not. But um, speaking of leaks and rumors... More leaks or maybe pr intentional leaks at this point of the Galaxy S22 design that uh, kind of 
look interesting because it looks like the Ultra is like a note, very squarish, you know, kind of replacement with that lenses individually sticking out of the pod, you know, but the S22 and 22 Plus look like they're more inspired from last year's design with the a full camera bump that kind of overlaps. So I don't know. It's either leaks. Who knows if they're accurate? The bottom line is it's clearly heating up that we're going to get an S22 very, very soon. But mm-hmm. then we also heard rumors there's going to be an S21 fan edition in January, possibly at CS. So I'm like, seriously, can you not <laughs> launch that? And then a week later, launch the Galaxy. What's going on here? What's your take? What do you think is going to happen here? Yeah, you know, it's it's going to be interesting. I, I definitely think there's going to be something something at CES. I'm I'm not sure I'm not sure what it will be. Um, you know, I I really do like the fan edition phones. I just wish they didn't come out the same time as the the next year's version of the phone comes out cuz I think that gets gets confusing cuz you're cuz it's just if if you're a consumer, you're buying a phone, you see S21, you see S22, wh- which route do you go? You know, it's just for me, I always feel that's sort of weird the timing of which it comes out, but as a person who loves using the Note, I'm really happy that the Note still is living a little bit in the S22 Ultra. Like the like, oh like my for God, me. me too. If the yeah. you know, it, definitely if the rumors are true, um, and just because like when the Note was around, and then the S the S20 I believe was around, it was one of those things that I kind of feel like the phones were merging anyways. Like they were sort of being the same thing because in my opinion the Note was always the big phone, and then yeah. when the S when the S20 lineup or or, or the S lineup came out. And everything was like the plus and they're sort of the same size. I'm like, what's the point of the note? What's the point? My, yeah, yeah my, minus the S pin. Put the S pin in the Galaxy S lineup and then you have you have a note. So, you know, I, I think the note lineup should have gone away, but I, I am happy that they are putting a lot of the, the note features in the S22 lineup. Um, so, yeah, hopefully the Ultra has the S pin inside of it and we basically have ourselves a note again just with a different name. I mean, I'm not a S Pen user, but I'm on board 100% because I think that option should exist for people. Mm-hmm. And I've always been a bigger fan of the Note, even though I don't use the S Pen, than of the S series. Same. And of course, exception probably being the S21 Ultra last year, which, man, I mean, you, I don't know if you saw Marquez's video like yesterday. Finally, they, they get, he gave out all the awards for all the phones that he picked. And the S21 Ultra just won so many awards. And you yeah. know... I mostly agree with him, a little reluctantly, to be honest, because I'm like, <laughs> I kind of don't want Samsung to win that many awards. But yeah. having used the S21 Ultra extensively for product photography, for car photography for my Giga Tech Radar, I am like, yeah, that phone does it all. Like, it really does it all. And so I can't fault that decision. It would be nicer if there was just a note, because the year before, the Note 20 Ultra was my pick for the best, I mean, non-folding yeah. Samsung phone of last year, right? So this is might be the best of both worlds. If they can <laughs> honestly marry, even if they can give us the same, I'm happy with the same as the S21 Ultra with yeah. a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. That's all I, and, and an S Pen. That's it. Yeah. That's it. You don't even have to add more. It's so good already. I agree. That just give us that, you know? Yeah, what 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 I mean, what more do what more do people want? Because I I know every year people will say, oh, the design is boring, it's boring. I'm like, you can't expect them to change the design every year. It is true, it tried, and it works. Like just stick with it and just refine little things here and there, and you still have a great phone. It works for Apple. Yeah. <laughs> they do that. <laughs> they keep refining and refining. All right, we got a bunch of news items. Obviously, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 was announced recently in Hawaii. We were there. The thing is that we know all the phones that are coming. Like, they pretty much told us what's coming. Like, Moto did theirs already. We know OnePlus is coming with one. And we know that Realme and Xiaomi both are coming with one. But guess what? We now have some dates. So Xiaomi 12, they don't use the Mi name anymore, so it's not Xiaomi Mi 12, it's Xiaomi (laughs) 12. The the flagship, so not the Ultra, not the Pro, like there's going to be different grades of that, but the Base 12 is going to be coming on December 28th. So are you ready to create more content between Christmas and New Year's? No, I am, I am, <laughs> I am absolutely not ready to do this, but you know, I am ready to get my hands on a Snapdragon 8 Gen phone, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But yeah, I am excited to, to kind of see what we get. I'm ready to to do some gaming with it and check the throttling and and all those fun things. So for me, I'm excited to use the phone, but I am also a little more excited to get my hands on the chip and see what it can do 
and, and the multitasking and how it handles throttling, most importantly for me, because that's sort of been Snapdragon's yeah. nemesis. So I really want to get hands on and test those things out. 100%. I have a Reno 6 Pro, which is six months old now. They finally, I finally asked for one because I was like, wait a minute, this is a Snapdragon 870. So, you know, I have a bunch of 870 phones, but most of them are kind of like Xiaomi phones that are budget-ish, like, I don't, not budget, but mid-range, right? So they're plastic phones that are Snapdragon 870, and that's kind of their selling point. They're essentially affordable gaming phones that don't look like gaming phones. But what I like about the Reno 6 Pro, it's expensive. It's like 700 euros. And they don't mess about. It's got everything, like metal frame, glass back, OIS on the camera, everything. No wireless charging, but it's got 65 watt wired, you know, because in most of the Asian markets, they don't do wireless charging. But the point is that thing is really fast. I mean, it's not my first 870, but I, I'm thinking to myself right now, if the 8 Gen 1 is as good as the benchmarks we saw at, you know, in the control environment at Qualcomm's, <laughs> event if we get to see that in real life and it delivers then finally we have a proper successor because i felt like the 888 the only phone that i reviewed last year other than the gaming phones other than like the red magic with the built-in fan and the asus that was really able to handle the the heat from the 888 was the the mi 11 actually it mm. didn't throttle it was i don't know what they did but it surprisingly didn't throttle the one plus as you know was a disaster for that the Galaxy S21 was also a disaster for that, if you remember properly. It was I like, didn't. man, I, I didn't really uh, do benchmarks on the Ultra, but I did benchmarks on the regular. And wow, it was just like, pfft. yeah. So for me, but the 870 phones have been solid. Like they're better in general because they're essentially, you know, 865 plus plus, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm impressed with this Reno 6 Pro because it's, doesn't look at all like a gaming phone. It's not designed to do that, but it is because of the 870 and it really behaves very well thermally. So hopefully the eight Gen 1 phones are going to deliver on that because I felt like last year, if there's one thing I can fault the Snapdragon 888 for, it's, you know, let's say complicated thermals for the yes. people creating phones with it. Like it's not <laughs> impossible, but it takes a lot more engineering, right? Mm-hmm. So knowing what I know from Xiaomi with the Mi 11 doing so well with 888, I'm pretty sure the Xiaomi 12 will be really solid on thermals. But we want to see the whole gamut. I want to see two or three phones with 8 Gen 1 before I can go like, okay, thermals are good. Definitely. Right? So Yeah, that makes sense. We'll see, right? Are you excited about the uh, fact that we're getting also a Realme soon with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1? The rumor is... Well, it's not a rumor. It's actually confirmed that the GT2 Pro, the GT being their flagship, and of course, this is version two of that, and the Pro model of that, because you know how the Chinese makers are just always add Pro to the best <laughs> ones, and then the Ultra Pro Max or whatever. Yeah. Um, but this is, yeah, this is a this is confirmed that on January 4th, and I'm not sure if it's going to be at CES that they're going to show this. I'm hoping that somebody from Realme is at CES so we can get our hands on with the phone or that they send us the phone in time. Um, I'm pretty tight with Realme, so hopefully I'll get something soon. Nice. But here we go. There is a phone coming with an 8 Gen 1, which for Realme, which is kind of a budget brand, should be around five to $600. That's not bad. Not bad the, at all. Get this, the GT last this year, the the original GT had an 888 and it cost 450 US dollars. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So this should be maybe 5 or 600. Okay. And the cool thing about it is so far that they've really the only other spec they've released is that it's got a back panel that's instead of glass is plastic, but it's a recycled paper <laughs> plastic. It's it's like I don't get it, but I guess it's uh, it's re- it's biodegradable. It's it's eco-friendly biopolymer, mm. hmm, paper paper rehashed into plastic. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was actually I was actually just looking looking at this. Um, that that is interesting. That that is definitely interesting. And you know, I you know lo- looking at looking at the specs. Of the well, there's not many specs of the phone, but just kind of looking no. at the looking at the G2. Um, I I actually did get a chance to check out the G2 at all last year. So I'm sort of kind of like backtracking now. And I was and I'm thinking like, where was this phone at for me last year? Like this seems like a really solid phone on paper. 
especially for price for performance. It's sort of what I look at. And I'm like, a phone that affordable with with a flagship processor, I mean, that is that is pretty cool. So looking at this, th this is this is this is kind of exciting to take a look at. And you know, my contact at Realme, I saw them at uh, both at Qualcomm's event and at MediaTek's event, said, you know, we're gonna go all out. Like we're not not just because we're the you know more generally more affordable budget brand from BBK. We want a real flagship, so we're gonna have all the specs. So you know, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Marketing is one thing; delivering yeah. the specs is another. You know, sometimes we hear that, and then critical things are missing. For me, OIS on the main camera. Like if it doesn't have OIS on the main camera, you're not a flagship. And the GT did not. So you know, it delivered a really good solid camera experience, but in low light, you know, it was a little blurrier because you couldn't stabilize that lens. And to me, that makes a difference. But for 450, I was willing to go, hey, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm going to shut up now and let you enjoy your, your, your making the most affordable 888 phone on the market. And yeah. then Red Magic came out with their gaming phone that was only $50 more. So <laughs> I, I do have a question for you. At what price point do you, do you break down budget to mid-level to flagship man i was gonna say and what are you willing to forgive at, at each level because it sounds like you're able to forgive ois at the budget level yeah i think for me it's like 500 plus uh and 250 the, the tiers are budget is less than 250 250 to 500 is mid-range 500 to to anything sky's the limit is is pre is flagship but there's in there i would say there's premium and then there's flagship right there's like okay. Flagship specs or whatever, you can have that for, you know, $599, like <laughs> Pixel 6. But I think you can, premium is like what you're looking at when you're looking at S21 Ultra or Z Fold 3 or, you know, Oppo Find X3 Pro or, you know, whatever it might be, OnePlus 9 Pro. Like, uh, to me, that's because once you're above 750 800 850 you're starting to get, you know, kind of in, in very... Uh, rarefied air territory in terms of budget, even though in the US, a lot of these phones are subsidized by the carriers, right? Mm -hmm. But the rest of the world is not like that. So, you know, I do a lot of, I cover a lot of foreign phones and global phones and Chinese phones. And so of course, I'm looking at it more like as a holistic thing. And I'm like, okay, yes, of course, you know, if you're in the US, why would you buy a, a, like a Xiaomi 12 when it comes out, when you don't get all the 5G support you need? And when you can go to your carrier store and get a discount, that's incredible on the next S22 Ultra, right? Yeah. What's the point? Like, I can't recommend that. Even though I think it's a bad idea to buy a phone from a carrier and it's locked and it has all that bloatware, I cannot fault people for making that decision. Like, budget-wise, I get it. But for me, I'm trying to look at it more like, you know, taking away the discounts, taking away the BOGOs and all that stuff. You know, I feel like that's my price tiers. And, you know, then there's below 100, which is like its own kind of category of its own. There are some Android phones in the 100 to $150 range that are not too bad, believe yeah. it or not. But they're not like I would rather spend 200 200 gets you a pretty solid phone today. Um, like a Moto something, you know, or even like a OnePlus Nord N series, you know, the North American Nords. That's why yeah. the N, by the way, a lot of people ask, like, why do we have an N after our <laughs> Nord, but North America? Okay. Um, so they've made some good phones in the, the N200 5G this year for Timo. Well, it, it's unlocked as well, but Timo is the one selling it mostly is, I think, one of the best 200-ish dollar phones you can, money can buy. So, you know, there are some choices in that price range. And that's what I'm excited about. I don't know if you feel the same way, but it doesn't matter how much money you spend right now. You can get a good phone. Yeah. No, I, I, I totally agree. Because, I mean, most people use their phone for camera, Facebook, text message, calling people. And I think a phone for 200 bucks can, can do those things. Now, yeah. how fast you can do it, how well your pictures will look, that's debatable. If you have decent light and you're outside, you take a picture of something, you put it on Facebook... Not many people are going to pixel peep your photo and say, oh, this must be a budget. Like, no, no one does that. Like, real people don't do those things. So, I mean, yeah, if you spend 200 bucks on a phone, 300 bucks on a phone, I don't think your experience is going to be that much different if I spent $700 or $800 on a phone, if I'm doing those specific tasks that you do. 100%. And did you, you saw Marquez's, uh, you know, phone comparison, the, the one he does publicly where people vote, right, on Instagram? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, again, I'm bringing up Marquez twice in a show. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, but the point is that if you look at what he did there and he does every year with that, it's really interesting because what came out this year to be the best phone is the Pixel 5a. And and I 
I think honestly, when I look at my Pixel 6 Pro photos and at the Pixel 5a photos I took when I reviewed the 5a, I actually feel that the algorithm, the computational stuff, is better sorted on the 5a because it's that old sensor that they're really familiar with, right? Mm. And Point. I cannot think of a better $450 phone because even though, yeah, you can buy that last year or this year's Realme GT for $450 with an 888, but like in every possible way in terms of experience, the same price, Pixel 5a walks all over it every mm -hmm. day, all the time, 100% of the time. And at that point, to me, it's like, it's a no-brainer. Like, I think that, a lot of people ask me, should I spend the extra $150 on a Pixel 6? I'm like, if your budget doesn't let you, don't. Because the 5A is so, so good. Like the 5A should be a $500 phone, in my opinion. Of course, it doesn't make sense when the, the 6 is 600 But it's so incredible that mm -hmm. they were able to lower the price yet again on that phone. It's too bad that it's only available in so few markets. The US and Japan is pretty much it. Can you believe that? Like yeah. my Canadian friends are mad as hell right now about that. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't get it. But, but yeah, I mean, Google has been really doing a really good job with the Pixel, and I agree with you for the five A. I mean, the the A series every year, someone would ask me what phone do I buy, and whatever the A series is that year, I'm just like, it's it's that good. Like, like good camera, good experience, software updates, you're fine. You enjoy it for a couple of years, and when the next one is out and you want to upgrade, go ahead and do it or keep it for a couple more years. You'll be fine. Yeah. So that's all you could ask for. Exactly. And the best part is that, you know, after two years, you plan to upgrade it, but maybe, you know, you're, you're out of work or something. You can't really afford it. You can go a third year with a Pixel. No problem. No mm -hmm. problem. Like that's the beauty of it because they keep upgrading the software. And, you know, I, ran, I used the Pixel 3 XL for a really long time. A shamingly long time for a tech <laughs> reviewer. <laughs> Because I was just too lazy to switch for a long time. Then I switched to OnePlus 8 Pro for a while. And after that, before the 5A came out, I wanted to kind of like, okay, I want to remember what it's like to use a Pixel that's not a high-end Pixel, you know, like a, not a flagship. So mm -hmm. I pulled out my 3XL because it was already it was already configured, right? It had all my stuff on it. So I pulled that back out of a drawer. And for a month before my 5A review, I used that. And then the 5A did not feel any any worse. In fact, I would argue the 5A was slightly faster. Mm. And uh, so, you know, and then of course I switched to the Find X3 Pro for a while because I dropped <laughs> the Pixel 3 XL. Ooh. Yeah, well, you know, so I, I could have gone back to the 8 Pro, right? It was already set up mm -hmm. and ready to go uh, from the previous year. But I was just like, you know what? I want to experience something radically different. I love the... Find X3 Pro so much when I got it last March or whenever it was. And I never set it up as my main phone. And I really wanted, what is it like to have a phone that doesn't work properly on the bands in 5G? Because, you know, it's easy to buy a US phone and it just works. You put your SIM in it, everything is great. But here it was like, okay, I'm on Timo. Will I get in, will it be usable enough? And I travel. And mm -hmm. at that point I was yeah. traveling for my car stuff. And you know what? Surprisingly, of course I did not get 5G, but surprisingly it was fine i got lt in most places and then every now and then it would drop down to hspa plus but you didn't even notice because hspa plus on timo is still so fast so honestly it wasn't a deal breaker but i don't recommend it to like a non-tech person right because yeah. you know they want to just it just needs to work right for me i have other phones i can tether from a verizon loaner that i have or something you know i can yeah. have options if all, all hell breaks loose so yeah but yeah and then i went to the pixel 6 pro where i'm at right now and now i'm like hmm should i put my sim in that oppo find n <laughs> hmm, for ces hmm you know, you actually live dangerously. Maybe I will. I don't know. <laughs> of course. Uh, speaking of other teasers slash rumors slash leaks, or it's not. It's more. At least it's an official teaser. Honor is apparently making a folding phone called the Magic V, and they teased it. And it's really nothing other than yeah. a photo of this thing half open. It looks. I'm not sure if I can. Like my gut <laughs> feeling says, this looks like it could be a flip competitor not a mm. fold competitor because remember there's also rumors of huawei making a flip competitor right now that was last week but and you're gonna say but wait they're not the same company anymore but they're not and i will acknowledge that however their current phones i have the honor 50 for example 
are identical. Like we're not talking like BBK group, which has an Oppo phone that's slightly different from the Realme phone, that's slightly different from the OnePlus phone, that are kind of the same specs, but physically there's a few changes, the camera bumps slightly different. No, they're identical, mm. the Huawei one and the Honor one. Yet how long ago did they split apart? Like a year or something? A while ago, yeah, a year. <laughs> so I am, you know, a little uh, yeah. hesitant to make conclusions because I want to believe, I want to believe that Honor is a separate thing, but it doesn't seem that way. So. I don't know. I'm excited. Oh, look, I like Honor. Honor is close to my heart. They made such great phones in the past and they are now making phones with GMS that have Snapdragon chips and they're really solid phones. Um, so yeah, bring it on. Bring it on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you know, <laughs> like, like I said, I'm the same way. And, you know, I, I definitely think 2022, we're going to see more foldable phones. I think this is the, this is sort of getting me excited about phones again because this is kind of a new market. You want to see all these companies, like what ideas they have, what is their interpretation of it? How can we make it better? How can we streamline it? Because, you know, the Fold 3 arguably is the best folding phone, but at the same time, it is chunky. And it was just like an inconvenience for me to use clothes. It was like a lot of things that made it a phone that it's hard for me to use day to day. Like I'll use it for special occasions, CES, things like that. It'll work great, but day to day, it was hard for me to use. So. As more phones come out flipping and folding phones, I'd love to see what everyone is doing to kind of get an idea of sort of where we're heading. Because we know other companies draw inspiration from everyone else. They say, oh, I like the way they did it there. Here's our take on it. Here's our spin on it. So I am, I am excited as more companies make folding and flipping phones. I do want to see more flipping phones, though, because I think Flip has more practicality for just a, a, and a standard appeal. user. Yeah, yeah for, for a standard mainstream. user. Definitely. You don't have to learn anything new, right? Like, that's yeah. the thing. Like, I think that for me, the reason I've never been a huge fan of the Fold, even though I'm a techie and junkie, you know, I love the tech and I love the high-end stuff. It's just that I can't find a use case for it. Like, I mean, I if I'm going to, once I get the phone flipped open, it's not an iPad. It's not as good as an iPad experience because nobody does tablets as good as Apple, right? But at the same time, it's better for sure. And there are some optimizations that Samsung did there for sure, but still just doesn't hit it for me. Like I need, I need a flip if I'm going to pick a folding phone. And so the Oppo is interesting because it's kind of making me reevaluate that because the Find N has kind of halfway size. So it's pretty small. Like it's iPhone 13 mini surface area of the front screen like it's that size mm, okay. in my hand it's that size imagine to stick two iphone 13 minis together yeah it's a, it's not quite that thick but it, you know if you rounded the corners it would be that that chunky yeah. and then imagine opening that up and putting two iphone 13 minis next to each other and that's the screen on the inside it's actually seven point something inches so it's not that much okay. smaller than the fold three yeah. But it's almost square. It's 8.4 to 9 aspect ratio. So it doesn't matter how oh, you yeah. hold it. It's like you're going to get whatever the same experience no matter what. Okay. That's definitely cool. So it's kind of weird. And I'm finding it okay. So far, <laughs> I haven't felt like I have to change my habits too much. Like I'm not doing dual apps on the big screen. I'm just stretching those apps and getting a bit more real estate. It's really nice for YouTube, man. Oh, I bet. Oh. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, that's where I'm really like, you know, for me, I am horrible when it comes to navigating the grid system, when it comes to streets, like I, I'm, I'm really bad. Like I start walking and then I see where the little dot takes me. Then I turn back around like anytime I'm in New York or whatever. So when, <laughs> when I, when I had the fold opening it up, it reminded me of like my dad opening a big map when we were, going, map, on road, yeah, yeah. We're going on road trips and <laughs> drawing lines and circles back in the day. So yeah, I mean, th there was some use cases for me, but the times I didn't use those use cases. It just wasn't worth it for me. That that's kind of where I ran into with the fold. So um, yeah, I'm excited to check out the Oppo. I'm excited for just a smaller but yet foldable phone because you know battling for my pockets is really tough for me right now. <laughs> like all the space I need. So for sure, yeah. So you know, as a lot of new phones coming, it's kind of interesting to me. Have you noticed that in the last few years? Because China doesn't celebrate the same holidays as we do, right? Obviously, their Chinese New Year is early next year, right? Sometime at February or something. I could be wrong on that. Please don't quote me on that. But it's coming up. So they're still full on like before the Chinese New Year where everybody's taking a break, let's release all the Krakens, right? All the phones are coming out. 
And so that's why we're seeing these announcements, December 28th for the Xiaomi 12, January 4th for the uh, Realme, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of interesting. And then, of course, this rumor of OnePlus, and then, you know, there is more rumors. So I think it's going to be pretty packed, you know, end of year slash CES slash January slash pre-MWC for those covering global slash Chinese slash Asia slash European market phones versus US. So, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It means, it means I might have to edit some more videos. This <laughs> yeah. Um, um, because I still have to post my Oppo N unboxing video. Oh boy, I'm so behind. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to get anxiety thinking about it right now. I'm oh like, no. I'm like, I'm trying to plan a break and then I'm like, if I don't do CES, then I can take my early January break, but then I'm hearing about phones and things like that. And then if, if, if Samsung releases something around this time, it's just like, oh boy, here we go again. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out my, my whole break. I want to take a good two weeks off. So I'm, I'm trying to figure yeah. that out now. Start now, Kevin. Start now because your CS is so early this year. I know. If you end up going, well, you're, you know, you said you're not going, but you're, you might go you said, might, for yeah. a couple of days. Yeah. So. Well, you're going to have to cover it remotely anyway. So you're going to be busy then. Of course, yeah. Last thing I want to talk about, we've already talked about this phone multiple times on the show, but because I don't have the Pro Plus, I have the Pro Non Plus of the X70 from Vivo. So I have the X70 Pro, which has almost the same specs, except it has a MediaTek Dimensity 1200, and it lacks wireless charging, and instead of F over 1.6 on the main lens, it's F over 1.8. And instead of an OIS on the 2X telephoto, it has no OIS. These are the differences, four differences. But in every other way, it's the same. Gimbal, the same sensors, the same 5X periscope tele. So I took it to Hawaii with me and took some awesome shots. And, you know, I know other folks have been on the show, uh, like Mike Lowe last week, who have the phone. But as somebody who's audience is not usually watching videos of, you know, non-US phones. Mm -hmm. What was your take using this phone? Yeah. So I, you know, I definitely wanted to check it out. I know my audience, as you said, so my audience is like consumer tech. So it's not off mobile phones. So they're not, they're not right. super excited about every single phone. And, and that, you know, that's completely understandable, but I wanted to show my audience that there are other phones out there that have amazing cameras. And so this was before... I used the new Pixel. This is before the new Pixel came out. And I knew that it may have had the same sensor inside. Like that was that was kind of a rumor. So for me, that was like a preview of what the Pixel can do. But I'll tell you what, when I grabbed the phone, I took it to the park and the the sun was setting. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just you know snap away, take pictures. This is the first time in a long time I was actually extremely surprised about how how well the photos came out. Like I, I was literally taking pictures and like showing my wife, like, look at these great photos. Like, I turned into like a fan and a consumer at that point. <laughs> I usually have like a, a, a reviewer's eye when it comes to things and I would notice certain things, but I was really just enjoying snapping photos with this phone. And then I started using the phone and I mean, it was a very solid phone too, don't get me wrong, but just the camera and just the usability of the camera. And I, it was one of those phones that I felt cool using because I just loved how the phone looked overall. I love the glass on the back and the, the Zeiss yeah. lenses. And it, I mean, it is a a very slick phone. It is a very just cool looking phone and, and using it and having the gimbal built into it was just really nice. I mean, it was one of those phones that like, I was like, this could be just my secondary camera. This could just be yeah. a camera I keep on me. So, so yeah. I, and I was very surprised because the last time I used a Vivo phone, I forgot what the name was, but it was sort of like a Vivo. Then there was blue. It was sort of in that category of phone. It wasn't yeah, like yeah. A, a, a higher end phone that you could expect to have some really great features like that camera. You know, it's funny because Vivo early on was more of the budget brand of BBK and Oppo was the regular brand. And then OnePlus got added for like essentially the Western markets. And, it's you know, you can think of OnePlus as Oppo for the US, right? We Like they're never going to come out with an Oppo phone here. But if we see a folding phone like the Oppo Find N, we're going to get that as a you know OnePlus phone here in the US if yeah. it comes. So that's basically the reality of it. But Vivo has gotten high end. And then they introduced Realme for India to compete with a Redmi, which is Xiaomi's affordable brand. So it's like, you know, 
I love how they picked the name to be so close. It's <laughs> such a scam, yeah, but so brilliant at it the is. same time. And so, you know, for a long time, Vivo wasn't making premium phones or maybe mid-rangers, but that was it. And then, you know, for a long time, Realme was just making mid-rangers. And then now, you know, Vivo's been for two or three years now been making some crazy, crazy flagships and with the X-Series. And then, you know, here we are with the GT series from Realme, like really cranking up a notch uh, in terms of price performance value ratio. And I don't know where that ends. Do they bring in another brand, right? I mean, it's like, you know, Xiaomi has Poco and then they have Redmi and they kind of compete because they're both affordable brands. And then they have CC in China. I don't know if you know the other brand that they have, CC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Two letters C. Huh. I've never seen one of those. Oh, wait. <laughs> I forgot. Vivo has a sub brand called EQ. I Q O O. I have one of their phones and it is their affordable brand within the Vivo part. Wow. Yeah. And guess what? The one they sent me was essentially a flagship with the Snapdragon 888. So I'm like, I can't understand this product line. That's confusing. Like, nothing makes sense. Okay. That is very confusing. Very confusing. The EQ. Seven, whatever EQOO that they sent me, IQO is the BMW branded phone. Oh, so, okay. Oh, yeah. Partnerships, huh. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Wow. So, anyway, all I'm saying is that I'm not, I've stopped making sense of it. I'm just at the point where, like, I'm not taking the brands necessarily on like their marketing slant. I'm just taking them for face value. I just get the phones, play with them, and I go, yeah, this one's great. Yeah, this one's kind of compromised. Yeah, this one's a good value. Yeah, this one's a proper flagship or whatever it might be. And it's just freaking exciting and fun, you know? Like, I can't keep up with Xiaomi. They send me literally a phone every two weeks. Like, <laughs> I don't even ask for them. And I'm like, oh, no, stop. I, yeah. Like, because they make so many phones. That's hard. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm not complaining. I don't want people to think, but... Like, it's a little weird sometimes is basically what I'm saying. So, yeah, the X series is solid, solid. Well, it's funny. Your your approach for reviewing phones is the same as mine. I don't want any press releases. I don't want to watch other videos. I want to use the phone. I don't want to know the specs ahead of time. My thing is I use the phone for a couple of days. And then after that, then I start looking at specs because I want to... I don't want the specs to influence my opinion on something ahead of time, or I don't want someone else's opinion to influence how I feel about it. So that, for, for me, that's like really, really, really important for me. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, look, I think we've got all the stuff under our belt here. So do you want to tell folks where they can find you on the internet? Yeah, sure. So, so yeah, my name is Kevin the Tech Ninja. You can just find me pretty much anywhere. You can find me on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, er everything. There's videos. You can find me there. Just type in Kevin the Tech Ninja and I will come right up. That's right. And folks, please subscribe to Kevin's YouTube channel. It is awesome. I get a lot of advice from you on things that I non, don't cover as my primary things, like that soundbar review you just did, you know, yeah. stuff like that, TVs. I appreciate um, it. Thank lots you. of iPhone 13 accessory content, which is great for those of you out there li loving your iPhones. I respect you all because the <laughs> iPhone is super awesome as well. And then uh, you know where to find me, folks, on the internet. I'm at Tank Girl. That's T-N-K-G-R-L, like the comic book character Tank Girl. But you drop the vowels and you get my handle on Twitter and my handle on Instagram. And if you want to chat about this show with uh, me and Kevin, you can do that on Twitter. And then Instagram is where you'll find pretty pictures of the phones I'm playing with, pretty pictures of the cars I'm playing with pretty pictures of the cars taken with the phones yeah it's <laughs> it's mostly photos taken with phones that's my whole life i think uh but check it out it's fun and there's youtube channels related to the podcast as well there's two of them youtube.com slash mobile tech podcast is the main channel it's basically my unboxings anything that's pure phone or maybe related like closely related like earbuds a lot of audio stuff i like to do there smart watches and stuff like that and it's mostly unboxing. Every now and then I'll put in like a, something else, like a review or something. But it's rare because that's what the podcast is for, really. And then I have youtube.com slash mobile tech more. And that's kind of like a new channel that my producer and I just started. And we really didn't know what to do with it. So there's not a lot of content there. But please subscribe. We'd like to reach the thousand subscriber mark. It's basically meta stuff. Like we've reviewed like 
weird gadgets that are maybe smart. For example, like air purifiers and like car gadgets, travel gadgets, accessories. I mean, we're not sure exactly where we're taking that. I've done a lot of videos this year about the cars I've been reviewing and driving for Tech Radar. So let me know in, you know, Twitter and if you're watching on YouTube in the comments, whether you want to see those car videos. I always put up a camera in the car and record, but I just forget to like edit it or do something with it. So if that's interesting to you guys, if you want to see, it's mostly EVs. So let me know. I'd love to hear it. But you know how YouTube works. Subscribe, like the content, comment, click the little notification bell, all that good stuff. You know how YouTube works. The podcast lives at mobiletechpodcast.com. There's a RSS feed there if you want to use the old school way of subscribing. But we're also on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, everywhere good podcasts can be found. I would love if your app lets you do it for you to rate or review the podcast. That really helps people discover it because, you know, on iTunes where people are looking for new podcasts about mobile, meh. They need to find me somehow. So it's there, but it's obviously helping if you can review and rate. And then there is the Patreon. So I've already mentioned it halfway through the show here, but patreon.com slash tankrail. That's patreon.com slash TNKGRL. If you want the video version of this show a little ahead of time, a day or two ahead, less edited, you know, kind of more raw. I've got that for you. There's a tier for that. You know, consider helping me out. I love doing this show, but it's not a huge moneymaker. That's why I do freelance phone reviews for hot hardware and car stuff for Tech Radar. So any little bit of money can help. So if you want to help with Patreon, that would be fantastic. And there's more tiers. There's a tier for Discord channel. I'm, I'm going to be on Discord. If you want to chat with me, we can have a long conversation about whatever you want. And, you know, stuff like that. So check out Patreon, patreon.com slash TNKGRL. I want to thank my existing patrons and I want to thank somebody this week that joined, Zach C. Thank you so much, Zach, for joining. Appreciate it. And if you don't like Patreon, I get it. There's another way you can help. There is a PayPal link in the show notes. Click through there. You can make a donation. I got a very, very generous donation from somebody this week. Thanks, Dana, for helping me out. I'm not going to say your last name. Much appreciate your donation this week. And then... Finally, I want to thank our sponsor, Audible. Audible's got me covered. They've been with me since oh, pretty much the beginning of the show four years ago now. So I want to thank them for being my longtime sponsor and my go-to for sponsorship. They are fantastic. You know, if you just love books as much as I do, you want to read books, right? But you know, I'm busy. I travel. I'm from my computer editing, writing all the time. My eyes are tired. It's so much nicer to just laid back, put headphones on, earbuds on, and just listen to somebody reading you a book. So guess what? That's exactly what Audible is all about. Audiobooks, lots of content there. They have more than just books. They have some short-term content, some podcasts, a lot of selection in books. Some of the books are read by the authors, which I really like. But basically, your bookworm, you should try Audible. And we have a deal for you. AudibleTrial.com slash mobile tech is the URL. That's AudibleTrial.com slash mobile tech. That lets you get a 30-day free trial, and then you get to keep a book whether you stay or not. But I think if you try it out, you'll stay. It's that good. So, folks, help out if you want. Help them. Help me. And uh, check out AudibleTrial.com slash mobile tech is the deal URL. I want to thank Audible again for being my longtime sponsor. And I want to thank you, Kevin, for being my guest this week. Thanks so much. Hey, thank you so much for having me and uh, happy holidays to everyone. Yeah, happy holidays to all of you. And you know that I'll have Kevin on at some point in the future again, but there'll be a show next week. I never skip a week. So stay tuned for that. Until then, cheers, everybody. This has been the Mobile Tech Podcast with Tank Girl, proudly presented by worldpodcasts.com. You can visit us online at mobiletechpodcast.com.